want your pleasure, yeah. All I want is just food for my baby. Till to me, my old job back. By the 20th century, however, the post office was no longer enough. The country was industrializing rapidly and chaotically. Booms were followed by busts. The ranks of the poor multiplied. A chorus of voices called on the federal government to regulate the economy to enhance the people's welfare. I see millions lacking the means to buy the products of farm and factory and buy their poverty denying work and productiveness to many other millions. I see one third of a nation ill-housed, ill-clad, ill-nourished. Franklin D. Roosevelt, President of the United States during its greatest depression in the 1930s, worked with Congress to pass laws to regulate industry and agriculture and provide social welfare. But where would the government get the authority for such regulation? it turned to a second secret weapon, the Commerce Clause, a part of the U.S. Constitution. It was meant to just regulate trade that traveled between the various states. Did this mean manufacturing that went between the states and the workers employed in these factories? Yes, it did, ruled the U.S. Supreme Court by the 1930s. But what about very small-scale economic activity that was primarily local, for a village or a town? or for one's neighbors. In 1942, a case came before the court that would have huge implications. The parties involved were U.S. Agriculture Secretary Claude Wickard and Roscoe Filburn, a farmer from Ohio. And what was at stake? 239 bushels of wheat, by weight a bit more than 6,000 kilograms. Not a tiny amount, but not large enough, one thought, to have drawn the attention of the highest court in the land. We've just arrived in Trotwood, Ohio, which is northeast of Dayton, and we are walking up to what was the farmhouse of Roscoe Filburn, who brought the case against the government in 1942 regarding whether wheat that he was growing for his own consumption was subject to regulation by the federal government by terms of the Interstate Commerce Clause. This is the house that uh, Roscoe Filburn and his family lived in uh, during that time. It was built in 1922. They were a German Baptist family, so a lot of fine woodwork and uh, a well-constructed home. A beautiful wide front porch where they would have sat with their families and enjoyed the scenery and the fields. And there's an American flag flying in the background still today. This and, is Ashley uh, Breidenbach, you know, an Ohio resident who's launched the Filburn Foundation to make the case and its implications more widely known. In the 1930s and 40s, farming was subject to the Agricultural Adjustment Act, with the government setting quotas and providing subsidies for various crops in order to stabilize the market. 